There seems to be a worldwide grudge against gasoline-powered vehicles these days. Rising costs of fuel prices, unrest in places like Eastern Europe, global concerns over climate change, and an increase in mobility for developing nations have all contributed to the latest concerns over our use of fossil fuels. Everywhere we look, it seems, there's an increasing push to take us away from the fuel that comes out of the ground and push us more towards the electricity that we can generate. And it's no different in the motorcycle world. It's called the Damon Hypersport. And admittedly, it's a very good looking motorcycle. It reminds me a lot of current sport bike styling language. Very Ducati, very uh, almost uh, BMW S1000 here. Uh, look, you know, a lot of European styling cues and Asian styling cues on this bike, and it's extremely aero. It is powered by a technology it calls the Hyperdrive an 18,000 RPM capable, 200 horsepower, six phase oil cooled electric drivetrain. Much like a gasoline powered superbike, the monocoque constructed hyperdrive unit is a stressed and integrated member of the frame of the motorcycle. Damon says this helps to reduce weight and improve performance. This thing is packed full of technology that I do like. It doesn't have mirrors, which we know a lot of sport guys take their mirrors off anyway because they're not worried about what's behind them. But this uses cameras instead. It has a radar system, like most newer cars, to alert you to threats around you. In places like the United States, there's a gasoline filling station almost every few miles unless you're in a rural area. But the charging infrastructure for electric vehicles hardly exists. There are in fact an estimated 56,000 electric vehicle charging stations in the United States. Out of those 56,000, only a little over 6,500 are DC rapid charging stations that can quickly charge a vehicle in just a few minutes. And the bulk of these charging stations are located in places like California. In fact, California has five times as many charging stations as the next closest state, New York, with 15,000 charging stations in California compared to only 3,000 in New York. When you get into rural eastern, south, and even the Midwest United States, charging stations are few and far between unless you're in one of the major cities in those states. But aside from the range, the biggest challenge that I see the Damon having is its price point. So the top of the line HS and Premier models, which are the ones that give you the 200 horsepower, 200 miles per hour, 200 miles of range, cost right around $40,000. You can get the HS model for $28,000. The SX model, which is the next model down, knocks things down to 155 mile an hour top speed, 150 miles of range, and will run you $24,000. And the SE model, which rings the bell at $19,000, only has 120 mile an hour top speed and 108 miles of range with 100 horsepower for $19,000. Bikes around $19,000 off the top of my head. Hayabusa, Jixer 1000, Yamaha R1, ZX10R, S1000RR, Ducati Panigale, Ducati Street Fighter. Um, what else is out there? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there for 19 grand that makes way more than 100 horsepower. 
Now, look, I'm not encouraging speeding or tops, uh, you know, ru running your bike out as hard as you can. But what I'm saying is at that price point, Damon is going to have a really hard time. Now, Damon says it has a $90 million back order. It's taking reservations for the Hypersport right now. I'm still skeptical of electrics. I'm not opposed to technology at all. I'm not opposed to less air pollution at all. But I have a lot of questions and a lot of concerns about any electric technology. I'm sure the acceleration and performance of this, if it's anything like the electric cars I've driven, it is mind bending at how fast and smooth and quiet they typically are. And again, I'm not opposed to the bike. I'm just saying that for the money, there's potentially a lot more out there for most consumers. And the guy that buys a $45,000 motorcycle is probably not commuting on it every day and is not worried about range anxiety. But for a company whose CEO says he's concerned about worldwide air pollution and global warming and resources, this platform is not accessible to most of the people in the world who are buying low dollar, small displacement bikes in third world countries. At $19,000, that still is a premium price point, even for the base model Damon. So I'd love to test ride one of these. And I'm sure right now Damon is probably not happy about me being skeptical about the bike, but I'd give it an honest review if a test ride was available close enough for me to go to, or if they'd like to pay to bring me out and have me ride one somewhere. Uh, I'm sure that's not going to happen, but maybe I'll get an opportunity in the future. Until then, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments or other videos about what you think about electric motorcycles, electric vehicles, what you think about some of the technology that's on this bike. Do you need it? Do you want it? Are you fascinated by it? Are you a fan of it? Are you a fan of this kind of bike in general? Let us know. Thanks for watching. As always, two on the ground, chin up, visor down. I'll see you next time.